Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Meeting Place Organic Farm. This is the third year we're not really able to have our open house, both because of COVID for two years and now with the avian flu influenza that is having a devastating effect on uh, poultry like chickens and laying hens and, and meat birds. So under the advice of the uh, poultry folks, we are not doing our regular open house, but we hope to see you next year. And for the meantime, we thought we'd share with you a little bit, oh there girls, just wait, of a farm tour. All right there, up a step. All right now, get up there. So we're gonna head up through a portion of the old orchard that we got, was here when we got the farm. And if you look off to the left, you'll see uh, some of the uh, orchard that we planted out here, some of the younger trees, easy. And uh, to our right is our hen house, the hen palace, where uh, we have the laying hens. Normally we'd be letting them out, but because of the risk of contamination with avian food, they're being kept in the hen house for the moment. Hopefully once the major migratory bird system is through, uh, we'll be able to let them out again. But we'll just have to see. Easy now. See there. So we do a bunch of our heating with wood and here's our woodshed getting refilled for the coming winter. On our right is the house. It's a passive solar home, and uh, we'll pause for a moment when we get up here so you can look in at the greenhouse, oh, where we have a whole bunch of plants that are going to be ready for sale in a couple of weeks. Normally, of course, we're doing the open house uh, a few weeks later. If you look over at the birdhouse there on the edge of the uh, fence line, those are tree swallows, which are an insect eating bird. We put up a lot of bird houses to, for both the um, bluebirds, uh, the eastern bluebird, um, and we have seen one back already, but they don't usually get here quite this soon. But the tree swallows are back, and they're good at eating things like mosquitoes, which uh, we uh, are delighted to have them help with. All right, girls, get up there. This is a high spot on the farm. Whoa, not the highest. The highest spot is where we have our water tank, where the solar pump, which you can see down in the pond there, pumps the water all the way up to the top of the hill in the farm. Whoa, just stand. Top of the hill on the farm and then feeds the water back to the livestock. And when we were irrigating the garden, we irrigate the garden. You can get another look at the south face of the house here. It's a passive solar design, so it has a, a lot of windows in the greenhouse on the south side. And uh, today there's enough sunshine that you can see some of the vents. The vent on the right there is opening up because it's warm enough. We've also got it opened up into the house. And that, and then if you look off to toward the barn, you can see where the pigs have a bit of a shelter where they can be outside in the winter, but still have uh, have nice shelter and little hutches that they can shelter in and put the straw in that and they keep very warm and comfortable out there with lots of fresh air. And then if we look across the farm, if you see the sort of browner area, that was where the cattle had their winter pasture. And uh, so that's an area that we won't be pasturing this spring. We're going to let it recover because when they're out there for the winter, it gets a bit beaten up. But now if you look off to the uh, southwest there, you can see the cattle out in the pasture area and uh, they get moved every day and the horses are usually with them but right now they're with us so uh, the horses are not out there 
And if you look down, we have the pond is about in the center of the farm. We have about 25 acres of woodlot. And if this were the normal time of year when we'd normally do the open house rather than this preview, um, the, the uh, trilliums and dogtooth violets and that would be coming on pretty strong in the, in the woods. And sometimes people will go for a walk there. Um, the pigs, when they were out on pasture, or when they're out on pasture, are uh, down in that area, um, just uh, southeast of the pond, um, and uh, have a nice bit of space, and also an area where they can make a wallow and uh, do the things that the pigs like to do, which is and lie in the mud and uh, enjoy things. And the sows are over the hill. Um, in, under a tree area that's uh, also again an area where they can uh, enjoy life. And I guess it's warmed up enough today that the black flies are out because the horses are shaking their heads and wiggling their ears and saying, there are a bunch of insects trying to climb into our ears. Um, all right, girls, get up there. Be easy now, we're gonna make a turn here. I hopefully make it sharp enough without racing down the hill. Easy now. The team that is pulling us today are the only horses we have on the farm at the moment because we sold our younger horses and uh, that this spring. But we're, that's because we're expecting uh, more young horses because both these mares are pregnant to a registered Suffolk stallion. And so we're looking forward to hopefully having some polls in May or end of May or on in June. So. We'll be repopulating with their offspring, Knockwood, on that one because one should never count your chickens before they hatch and never count your holes before they're born and up and nursing. But um, we've had pretty good luck with horses. We've, I did a count and I think we've raised 52 foals since we first got a team of horses back in 1976. And song mare on the right is a mare that we purchased and Jeannie the mare on the left is her daughter who was born about five years ago now here on the farm and uh, so as I say we've been raising horses um, and trying to train them we usually start them and when they're about uh, a year and a half maybe three quarters old get them used to the harness by putting the harness on them in the stall and uh, then take him out with an experienced older mare or older horse and just walk them around in the barnyard, get them used to having the harness on them and the lines, uh, the reins. And then once they seem to be pretty good and relaxed about that, then we uh, will uh, hook them to the sleigh, hopefully. Hopefully we've got some snow. So straight ahead of us is our cattail marsh, which as I say is a nice habitat for uh, the red-winged blackbirds which nest around it. But unfortunately, uh, <coughs> the ash trees that we had around it have all been uh, killed by the emerald ash borer. We have mounted a uh, barn owl house down here. Oh, girls, just wait. I know. Oh, we're talking, but we're not going. I know you've been very patient. You've been very patient. But uh, we have the farm now fenced for about 36 paddocks um, that we can move the animals through. And actually, 
Um, actually, it's more like 60 actual individual paddocks. Uh, some of them are labeled uh, west and east or north and central and south. So um, this lets us give the cattle and the horses generally a new spot every day. So they're moving on to fresh grass and then after it's had a chance to recover and replenish its root reserves, then we come back to it. So this is a way of keeping something green growing on the farm usually the whole time. Right now, while you can see, the, the neighbor's uh, cornfield hasn't been planted yet, so it's just uh, brown with uh, getting sunlight and warming up. The grass here around us is photosynthesizing and helping keep things uh, cool while it turns sunlight into carbohydrates and feeds the soil with wool with the root exudates as well as the horses and the cattle. So if you look over toward the pond, you can see the box up on, mounted on the tree. That's a barn owl nest box. Barn owls are a pretty rare species in this part of Ontario. So there are programs to help provide habitat for them. And the uh, nesting boxes are one. Our pastures are pretty good hunting grounds for them because there are lots of uh, voles and mice for them. Whoa! This, this area, if you look over to the dead ash tree there, you can see a red-winged blackbird in it. And this whole area is an area where we did delayed haying for a number of years which has really been a boom for the meadowlarks and the uh, bobolinks. Uh, we hadn't seen meadowlarks for like three years, and then once we did the delayed haying, um, we've seen meadowlarks and we've seen a lot of bobolinks. Uh, the bobolinks aren't back yet. They're usually, the males are usually back by the time of the open house, but they're not back yet this year. But again, the pond is one that we dug it provides uh, habitat for the frogs, turtles, um, some snakes, and of course, a lot of uh, bird life that likes the water. So this area uh, has a lot of uh, wildlife and uh, bird life in it. And uh, we'll be doing it a bit differently this year. We're going to again do the delayed hang, but we're going to go through with a very light pasturing before the birds start nesting. And hopefully that will delay some of the hay growth so that it's a bit less mature when we actually go to, uh, go to do it for the, uh, for the livestock. So that's, uh, that's the plan that we're doing uh, at this point. Uh, all right now, get up there. There we go. Whoa. Look off here, you can see a row where there's sort of um, kind of a light brown spot in, uh, in the fence line. And those are trees that we've been planting to have a windbreak. And there's a second row. And this is to provide both as they grow up shelter for the livestock when they're out in the pasture, but also to try and slow the winds because with the uh, uncertainty around climate change, expect that maybe there'll be more severe weather and that this will um, help provide a bit more um, windbreak and protection uh, over the course of uh, the coming years as those trees grow up. They were also planted so that there's a diversity of trees. One of the problems um, we discovered is that uh, some of the windbreaks we planted when we first got the farm you know, 45 years ago now um, were a mixture of ash and spruce well, unfortunately, the emerald ash borers pretty well killed all the ash. So those uh, tree lines are now just spruce. And so we don't want to have that uh, lack of diversity of species. It's a real clear uh, reminder of how important diversity is in the uh, ecosystem and in the farm. And then you can see to the south of us here is our, our woodlot. But uh, it's something we use um, for uh, both firewood and for, uh, for logging. We do selective logging in it and we do it uh, mostly with the horses so that there's very limited uh, ground disturbance uh, if you do it in the winter. Um, so and 
if you look back now, you can see the sort of situation of the house on the hill there looking out over the farm. And it's not just nice aesthetically, it also means we can keep an eye on the livestock in the pastures, at least until these windbreaks grow up. And then we may not find it quite as easy to see what's going on in the far corners. If you look here, you'll see a fence line. And we take the fences in in the winter there. They're um, a, uh, we call it a poly wire. Uh, that is a mixture of nylon uh, braided woven stakes. So it's an electric fence, and uh, we've got it set up so that we can move the animals every day uh, around if uh, we're not going to set up a larger area for a few days. But the, the goal here is to have them eating an area fairly intensively so that they leave their fur and their urine there and have raised off and have to leave it alone fast growth season for maybe uh, a month and slower growth later in the summer, maybe for 60 or 70, maybe 85 days. But the idea is that you're wanting the plants to be grazed pretty thoroughly, but then have lots of time to regrow, recharge their root reserves, and keep a very healthy uh, pasture. And uh, this is sort of the way uh, nature did it with large herds of uh, bison or elk or those sorts of things. So it's, it's trying to mimic the way herding animals were handled by um, uh, predators, which kept them bunched. We used the electric fence to keep them bunched, and our own management to come out and use the strips. Um, and so what this does mean, though, is that throughout the year, on into November and December, we still are able to keep grazing in our pasture and not have to feed the strips. So it means that they're outside getting fresh air and exercise and sunshine um, throughout the year because we also like to winter them on pasture by feeding hay out there when uh, things have stopped growing.